Almost. Almost. Oh, my. Now, that's a good job. Would you come? Oh. Yay! We did it! We won! We did it! Yay! Good job, baby! So again, that's a doll. What's your name? Jacob. Jacob. We're glad that you came today. Stillwell, Oklahoma is in the far western part of the Ozark Mountains, just west of the Arkansas and Oklahoma state border. It is less than an hour south from where I live in Springdale, Arkansas. For a lot of Cherokees, it was the ending spot of the Trail of Tears. My first time hearing a conversation in Cherokee was waiting in line at a store in Stillwell. It is within the Cherokee Nation and has the highest population percentage of Cherokee people in the world. Last year, the Washington Post released an article quoting a survey by the National Center for Health Statistics that showed that Stillwell, Oklahoma has the lowest average of life expectancy in the United States at 56.3 years of age. It is a generation lower than the national average. There is no other place in the world like Stillwell. I wanted to show the unique and beautiful culture of this area. I wanted to talk to the people who are facing this adversity. Uh, my name is Jerry Gilstrap, and I'm the superintendent at Stillwell Public Schools. We run about 1,350 students, uh, K through 12, pre-K through 12, actually. Uh, we're the top of 4A, and, and sometimes we bounce to the bottom of 5A. We are about 74% Native American population, very college and career ready, have piloted a lot of programs, run a lot of grant programs, and we do a lot of great things here um, that kind of a, I feel like we're kind of a hidden gem here. So um, we have about 30 um, concurrent hours on campus because we partner with NSU, we partner with Cherokee Nation. Cherokee Nation does great things for us, lots of wraparound programs. Um, but we offer a lot of dual credit. We have a great VOTEC right down the road that our, our kids can become very career ready through their programs. So lots of good partnerships, lots of opportunities for our kids in a rural area. I'm Larry Nettles. I'm the city clerk treasurer for the city of Stillwell, Oklahoma. We have the largest pie making factory in the world. Schwann's company is here. Uh, it's the largest facility of its kind in the world. The town was established uh, in the late 1800s with, uh, and named after the president of the Kansas City Southern Railroad, uh, Stillwell, because that was the main point in town was the railroad depot, which is now a museum, I might add, and, and a well done museum also. We're the home of the uh, Oklahoma annual strawberry festival. This is its 72nd year. It uh, brings in anywhere from 25 to 35,000 people. Last year they won the International Kiwanis Club Award for the best system, the best program uh, in the world with our strawberry festival. And uh, so we're, we're quite proud of that. We've got a lot of things going on. We're working real hard to upgrade and uh, we're looking to the future, trying to make this a better place to live. We are in the western half of the Cherokee Nation. They are deeply involved in multiple things here. One of the endpoints for the uh, Trail of Tears is over near our cemetery here in town, for example. I mean, we are intimately involved with Cherokee history. And uh, a lot of uh, Cherokees who have uh, an unfettered descendant, you know, from the Dawes role are here and are very active. They're very active people in our county. We still have a few people here in the county that do not speak English. They are only Cherokee speakers. Uh, I cannot say whether that's totally by choice or by training. Uh, I think at some point in their life they decided they just weren't going to mess with learning English because here at Stillwell they basically don't have to. They can get by just speaking Cherokee. It's an integral part of our heritage here as the town, not just the Indian part of the town, but the town. It's an integral part of us and we're not really interested in losing that. Everywhere I go in this United States, I tell folks, I said, no Columbus didn't discover 
what? American. 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 He discovered Indians. Made it. Huh? And it was a good land. In Jalen, no. The people said Indian land. Slump. Who nationalized? Who Jalen So he not It belonged to God. No one who need that to us. Anybody's got money can buy. They don't give nothing to God that we the one that owns it. He's the one what? Who walks on that way. He's the one who made this earth. He's the one who made all the trees. He spoke it to his hands up. Huh? There wasn't even no seed back there. But God spoke it. Look at me. I'm an Indian. <laughs> what nationality? I'm an Indian. You don't even rest to see. When that G did send the brain boy out. I'm an Indian. Yeah, but Saskin Gawaska, he would just say, I'm an Indian. I got tantas. Don't lose it. He's saucy. What kind of Indian are you? Cherokee Creek. And how many Indians in the United States? Um. <laughs> About 200 and some different tribes in the United States. Around 15 to 17 million. And everyone we got to the land in neck. Every one of them speaks different language. Just like it is a Lekani, that's Cherokee. Iggy Ohusa, the Lekani star. We're losing our Cherokee word. Just like we're losing God's word. Katui is Cherokee, just like us. Who walked in that, that time? You go to Hastings, are you Cherokee? John Tisco. There's more foreigners in there than there are Cherokees. <laughs> huh? Really? And, and I think, don't know. Why? Why, folks? Who opened the gate? <laughs> God goes to his saying. I have to fill out more paper, huh? Really? Go where the police You fill this out, you fill that out. I said, we just filled them out two days ago, same old thing. And we gave you the papers, what did you all do with them? Oh, we put them up somewhere. But it was so funny, I changed from Man killer to Memorial Hospital, is that right? A doctor there. And I go in, see a doctor. Francis Ross's daughter. Huh? And then the other. Girls, I need to like Cherokee girls working at the White Hospital. You go to Cherokee clinic. I don't know who's working there <laughs> because the lucky guy he didn't know it. So then you call it. I don't understand the word. That I said, "Are you supposed to be Cherokee?" He's a lucky huh? So well, you got tearing the paper around, you say, you're Cherokee, and you don't know a word of Cherokee. One thing, who saw, who will is on that foot dog when? Agiosi. And if you all don't know what that is, then you all just stay here. <laughs> <laughs> all right.
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, oh God, for your people today, God, oh Lord, that you bless, Lord. My name is Ethan Wolf. I am a CSM up at Walmart. A lot of people know that the trail of tears ended in Oklahoma. And in town, like heading out um, west, there's a marker that says end of the trail, which a lot of people believe that's where they officially stopped. I'm, I'm glad that schools like Marietta are I have classes for the young for young kids to relearn the language. I have a friend who's studying the language, learning how to read it, learning how to write it, and you know maybe he'll be able to start teaching that to others pretty soon. And when my son grows up, I want him in those classes as well. I want him to relearn. In a community outside of town, there's a there's stomp grounds which belong to my family. My mom would come to my school during Culture Day, you know, a celebration of what we did. And she would show kids how to make baskets and stuff like that. And you know, we had other people that would teach a little bit of the language there. And I also have, you know, I have family that still makes stick ball sticks. And a lot of people, for those that don't know, it's an old game that's kind of derived from what lacrosse is today. May is up north around New York and that area, like the Iroquois, and, I was up there, played it, and then we had our own version where we had two sticks. And those games would go on for days even. Some even, it's also known as the little brother of war. Sometimes um, during wartime, that was also a way to settle disputes. They'd play the game. Uh, my name is Tanner Ridge. I am a line worker at Pico Facet. Well, not Pico Facet anymore, it's a filtration group. I uh, am a Piwa dancer. I go to Piwa's as much as I can. Uh, there are some tribes here that even I didn't know of until I started uh, powwow dancing. Uh, my uncle who actually got me into powwow dancing is Kiowa. And along with a couple other friends I've met over time, they're Seminoles, Choctaws, uh, Alley Utes is, is a tribe of one of my brothers. Um, there's a couple Muscogee Creeks who live around here, but uh, yeah, mostly it was Stillwell is Cherokee, and uh, the history goes, you know, the Trail of Tears ends in this town, and I didn't know that until I actually moved to this town. Powwow dancing was uh, something that I found that would kind of help me express my culture, uh, but not too many Cherokees would say I'm a traditional Cherokee because I powwow dance and the Cherokees were not actually powwow dancers, they were stomp dancers and a stomp dance is a completely different type of ceremony compared to powwows. You know, I go here and there but you know it's still a stranger to me because it's not how I was, it's not how uh, how I was taught I was in powwow before I was in stomp dance. My first powwow dance was uh, right after high school, I was on a New Year's Eve. My uh, uncle, he was actually my cousin, but you know, he, I grew up calling him my uncle. Um, he brought me into the circle. I became a straight dancer, and a straight dance is a dance that originated from the Ponca tribe. That was my first dance, and from then on in 2015, I've been dancing ever since. I changed up my dance style. I still straight dance every now and then, but I started dancing a new style that was introduced not too long ago. It's called the chicken dance. This type of dance is from a northern tribe, like I would say Washington and South Dakotas maybe. But uh, it's a dance that started to show up around here in Oklahoma. You know, I, I love doing it. I love seeing the people at powwows. I, I have many brothers and sisters through the circle and aunts and uncles, you know, they're all good family, all good friends, and you know, I, you know, it's always a good time at being at a powwow, you know, it's always good fellowship seeing other people. Uh, I've lived most of my life in a small suburb outside of Stillwell called Greasy, and when I was uh, younger I moved here to Stillwell, and uh, I always thought it was a pretty good town, and then uh, when I got here, 
you know, it, it showed a lot different to me, you know. It showed all the problems that this town has now. It's hard to see stuff like this sometimes. I mean, it, it scares me because I'm I'm the one who has to kind of step up for my family at some point, and I'm the one that's going to have to do my way of protecting them. I was shocked when the article came out. Um, I am 56, and so I've kind of made a running joke when I go to... Um, different meetings and the things that I do as a superintendent that give me a minute because I'm 56 and and I hope I make it through the meeting <laughs> and everybody laughs uh, because everybody has heard about the article or read the article and we do have a high a high child poverty rate we do um, but you know you can go any place in any community and you can find um, a picture of a home that's run down you know, and, but you can also go two blocks down the road and find a, a, a very well-built, newer home, you know. And, and so I think sometimes we've been portrayed in the media, um, you know, that we are this high poverty area and, you know, and there's, there's so much more to Stillwell than that. We're still trying to figure out how they arrived at that number, but that being the case, we're still actively involved in what we call TSET, the Tobacco Settlement. Uh, it's a health initiative. We're deeply involved with Cherokee Nation, who's a great partner with the city, by the way. And uh, installing, uh, we've done smoking ordinances, alcohol ordinances. We have a, a large, effective city park. We're trying to make that more uh, effective uh, and more usable for everybody. I, I've just sent out tweets about um, you know, a very successful young lady that is playing basketball for SNU, a very successful young man that's playing basketball for RSU that has just set a record. Um, I have my own four children that have graduated, that one's an engineer, one's an ag teacher. We have very successful kids that, um, that leave here and go on to lead really successful lives. So I would like some of the good, you know, to, to come out. It, it's important that our citizens have a healthy, constructive place to live. And that's all involved. I still don't know where they got those statistics. I would disagree with them strongly. But that doesn't negate the fact that we, as every other city, needs to be working on that. And we're, we're trying. We're pursuing it. It's on. There's some discussion about that just about every council meeting about what we can do. We have neighbors that are 90-some years old. Um, so we're thinking, who are these people? Um, I know that um, we have uh, a lot of diabetes in our area, uh, but but if you're if you're talking about things that are in the air or things that may be in the drinking water or things like that, there there's been no data to back anything like that up. So. Um, we're curious ourselves, and we would like to ask the the exact people who did the article um, what they think that's founded on, uh, because you know we're we're talking to people in the community that are that are elderly people um, that we've known for years that uh, tend not to really not to believe it. So, um, but they must have something uh, to to back up their their research. My name is Bobby Crittenden. I'm a dentist. I've owned a practice in Stillwell for 15 years. I don't know if you're aware, but there are actually two EPA monitoring sites in Stillwell measuring levels of mercury. And there are very high concentrations of various forms of cancer here. Cancer just kind of came out of nowhere and it's just become a regular now. It's almost like every other time you turn around you hear someone else getting diagnosed with it. I've heard some talk, a little, not a whole lot, about uh, some mines that were around here that was uh, doing mercury or something quite some time, well before I moved here in 82. And I've heard some talk about some suspicions about that, but as near as I can find out, nothing's ever been proven. There's never been anything about it, but uh, our incidents around here of illness and, and things that are pretty bad are not so strong that it really can't be 
covered by the idea of, of generational poverty and, and uh, things related to that. That's not to say that's all of it, but it's not so great that you can't say, well, you know, it could just be that. So uh, I kind of reserve opinion on that because I don't know any facts about it. I just know, and, and everything I've heard, nothing has ever been conquered. It's just been kind of rumor type thing. It's affected from outside somewhere. You know, some people are still dumping in the waters and stuff, and I'm thinking it's slowly making its way here, because I remember a while back whenever the, the plant in Gore was making people sick. It's not something I worry about. I'm 70 years old, and I'm, you know, I've lived here for 36 years. Again, I'm not a physician. I'm not treating people for heart disease and, you know, high cholesterol and type 2 diabetes, which also is rampant here. But I do think that poverty, easy access to fast food, which is not food, <laughs> it shows up in the teeth, but what shows up in the teeth shows up in the body. I'm proud of the healthcare system that the Cherokee Nation has provided for people because without that, there wouldn't be access to care for the average citizen here. Again, due to poverty, uh, lack of jobs, most people don't have access to good health insurance. I think we need to take a hard look in the mirror rather than be offended at empirical data that has no bias. I think we need to look at ourselves and how we live. I'm Cameron Downing. I'm not really from still, I moved out here though. I'm just gonna run a little bit, man. Until I get tired. It's not like it's got anything around. And plus, it's got basically just fast food for food around here. It's it. not a bad thing to eat fast food. It's bad if you do it in heavy amounts though and not do anything while you're eating it. Like, anything's bad. Too much of it. Too much time, you die, right? Just gotta work out, do something, drink water. But I don't even drink tap water though. Not that I know it's bad, it's just that, you know, everyone's always like, there's something in the water. You know, like everything has something in it. Even bottled water is not good for you all the way. But it's like lesser evils. Just go to work, chill out, come back home. It's got basic community life, it's not a bad thing. I've had friends from, you know, out of state and stuff that never even knew nothing about this place. Come here and they're, it's like, oh, are those reservations? I'm like, no, there's communities and there's a lot of Indian, Indian homes that was built there for these people. And you'll see a lot of the Indians around here, they'll have like a, a belly and like, um, like a, you know, around the midsection. And like it's a sign of diabetes, but I call it the gluten ring because I swear, I don't, that, you know, we're, just, we're not made to digest these things. Feeding the addiction that's going on around here that, you know, contributes to why shit's messed up. Why I'm here and got to slap somebody around every few days or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, and it's helped. I mean, it's provided, you know? There's no about stabbing all the time. I mean, right here in this parking lot, I mean, all the time. I mean, <laughs> somebody's getting dumped or something. Fuck, everybody dies. This is, this is death capital of America, baby. That's what I've been telling everybody. Damn, y'all don't know who's the death capital of America? You're seeing kids now being taken a day or two old because they've tested positive for meth in their system. And I, I've seen and I kind of know probably at least five, six women that have multiple children and don't have any of them because they were all tested positive for meth. There ain't nobody else that could change my life but him because where I was, I kept saying I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change, but you know, I always wanted to be in the same place. But now that I have Jesus in my life, God in my life, I got a different life.
a better life. Only one that he can change because I can't change nothing myself. It's only by the grace of God that I can. What all was bad for me, he took out. He took it away. I no longer have the friends I used to. I no longer go to places I used to go. Now I have a new family, new friends, and I have a better place to go, and that's here in his house of prayer. Feeling what I feel, and I know this feeling won't go away, you know, like sometimes or anything else in this world can make you feel good, but it's only going to last for a moment. But, you know, the feeling that God gives you is going to last forever. And nobody you, can take that away from you. I like to say I love the Lord tonight and just thank Him for delivering me from where I was. Uh, to get, to get. Thank Him for the pastor and thank Him for this church. And without Him, I, I just couldn't do nothing by myself because my thanking is no good. I stand and say I love the Lord and I, I thank Him for all that He does for me. And I thank Him for all that He's kept me from. Because without Him, you know, I could have been in some of the same situations you guys were in. But God has kept me. And I just thank Him that He's kept me through it all. And I just love Him and I praise Him. Now that time is real precious because we're on His time. We're not on our own time. We can't decide when we're going to go, when we're going to, how long we're going to live, how long we're going to, you know, stay here. It's all up to Him. We're in His hands. When he says it's time to go, then it's time to go. We can't put a stop to it. We just have to accept it. No argument, no nothing. Monica, I'm glad to be here tonight. I love him and I praise him. Yes. For the best yes. for me. And, Amen. And he has me. I know it's not my own that I'm sharing it. I know he has something for me to do. Monica, I love the Lord. Thankful to be here tonight. You know, he has said that you know, God is real. Jesus Christ yes. is real. And, I, and I'm just thankful. I'm, I praise him every day that he saved me. And I love him more every day. And I thank him. Everything that he keeps me from every day. Lord. No matter what I go through, no matter what people do to me, I know that I love Jesus. I rejoice. I rejoice. Amen. I've for many years there. Good calling, you know, and man, I couldn't run no more of this. Come on, Lord, it's all good. This is what you want, Lord, you know, it's yours, man. Amen. You know, so I had to give it to him, and you know, I like where he told me how to read that Bible, you know. I read you something every day. I'm going to be this big, I'm going to be this big. But man, he showed me something every day, and I got to give him all the glory, you know. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you really are faith believer, you will suffer. You will suffer. People will talk about you. Amen. Look at that. Look who thinks she is or he is. They think they're better than we are. No, I'm just saved by the grace of God. Amen. No? Amen. I'm no better than nobody else. How many have you had have seen God? How do you believe in him? You have never seen him. Right? If you've never seen him, how do you know there's a God living? Huh? Because you feel him in your soul. She can feel it in her soul. Come on. Amen, come on. How many of us really, you know, we have never seen him and we have never seen in the beginning of this world. How do we know what the Bible says is true? Huh? Because you feel Come on. it's a change. You get making huh? a change in your life. You change. When your life is, comes to Christ, then your life is changed. Their faith caused them to go against the evil world. Huh? Influence. influence of the day. My. Now look at the evil influence we got in the world today. My name's Nathaniel Chifle. Uh Right now I'm not really able to do anything. I'm, kinda, I'm on the street right now. But uh, I had to do my odd and end jobs to come get food, what I need. I usually stay with friends and 
what I need to anyway. It used to be a damn good little town. It really did. I mean, and then basically just the dope came in. It, that's, I know it kind of sounds harsh, but I mean, that's the best way I can explain it. Because when I was little, I mean, the Lord, playing baseball, playing football. I used to play football. <laughs> but just that short amount of time, it went from that just still a nice little town to hell, <laughs> really. If I were to focus on everything that happened bad, it wouldn't be anything good to focus on. Because there's more bad than good. That's why you gotta be selective about what you care about. That sounds hurtful, but it's true. That's like me helping a meth head for years on end, and they keep fucking up, and they become a liability. And the liability is what puts me down outside, and that would mean I'm giving rid of my own well-being, which I believe is to a point where if anyone believes in God or self-preservation, you should never give up your own well-being to someone that's only going to give up their own well-being after you give up your well-being, and they're doing it more willingly than you're trying to help them. You gotta say something. Oh, let me go first. I'm Sean. Kid Oki. Oh, kid. <laughs> I'm Zach. I think the oldest person I know died at 109, 102. People around here? Because I honestly don't think about how old people are, man. Think about it, they don't get that old a lot of time. Thinking about it, because if most of these kids could think about that, it'd probably be a lot better. Think of all the chicken plants that surround you, I mean, all the winds that blows down here. Oh, God. Yeah. Tyson plants. Dude, we have some, some of the highest mercury in Oklahoma in our water, if not the United States. I don't drink We have a lot of mercury water. in our water. I don't drink water. And bottle water all day. I know. Look how close the crap plane is, dude. It's just right there. Just think about you're it. Just, you're breathing that air too, man. There's a bunch of little kids who found a bunch of needles behind garbage dumpsters, dude. I can imagine. Yeah. The needles laying on the ground over there. Little kids that run around. Yeah. The parents laying around, dude. A lot. Of time. Yeah. They usually just don't even pay like, attention to the kids, man. Don't you watch a three-year-old kid just freaking walking in the road? Not no, in Skyway particularly. Yeah, no joke, dude. But like, they used to just. Be a lot of kids that would just run around. Like, there's like 12 year olds in this town that run around smoking dope. Yeah, because people around here don't care, bro. They'll smoke it right there in front of their kids. Yeah. But so they, yeah, fuck. That's fuck. No, they don't really care, bro. That's, that's how these kids start out. Even in my worst days, I never fucking did shit like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> fuck. It's not good out here to have all that gang relations shit out here. I mean, someone from this town is going to go actually out there to like the city, like in Tulsa or somewhere like Oklahoma City, and end up fucking around wearing a flag. And they get checked on it, and they ask what street, what hood, who's your mom, who's your dad, who the fuck are you come from, where area you are, and check you out. And some people don't give you an answer either. They don't give you give you any questions or anything. You can't even get an answer to them because some people shoot you first. They don't give a fuck. Some people just like that because they got so many people geeked out that do that shit. Like, cause I got family that do this stupid shit, and I don't really fuck with them like that. But like, I got uncle that's in prison. He's been cooking meth forever. I got arrested when I was 16 for robbing a house. You know what I mean. And that since then I've got out of court and everything because I've come to realize all this shit and I'm sitting here trying to tell people about, I mean, this is a fucking problem. If you want to stop a population from getting fucked up and ending up like this, you start with the kids. You start with kids, man. You start targeting the kids that will listen and tell them, you know what I mean? Say there is something wrong. So. I mean, dude, I was probably like 20, 20 minutes away from death, dude. dude I left this person's porch. 20 minutes later, a guy got stabbed. She I died on the porch. Yeah, dude. That shit did happen. Foot. I mean, I've I've been jumped twice in one day. I know. That's what I mean. They don't want to do it themselves. They yeah, they have to have. Or they I mean, three cars full. Three cars full, man. Just foolish. Now that is. I've never when it's easier just to get in a fight and be done with it. It's just people can't see the other side. People can only ever see their own side to it. You know what I mean? This just, I mean, they're like, oh no, you fucking did me wrong, I'll oh, fuck you. And then they just think of the worst possible thing they can inflict at the moment. No, actually, it's, it's, the, it's the people around them, dude. Just fill, filling their heads, you know? Yeah. And then it's them filtering the bullshit. I mean, what, what they think is bullshit and what they and know is bullshit. On they, they label it the way that they feel is needed. They don't have a mindset of their own. No, I live in an area of apartments over there. And uh, a mom got shot by her son in the head after he got out of prison. And then a uh, kid got stabbed in the heart behind the skating ring. Well, not uh, stabbed in the heart by the skating ring. A kid got shot there over a drug deal. And the other kid got stabbed around the apartment complex I lived in because he got stabbed and died too. Did that too. But and I hear a lot of stories around here. But it's not like there's not murder anywhere. I mean, there's murder everywhere. I mean, if you try to go plant the seed where it's not never been, never been a dead body, you'll never have a seed planted. You know what I mean? 
you don't work at Facet or if you don't work in the factories, then it's McDonald's or the convenience stores and Walmart. Yeah, there's a few jobs here and there, but I mean, nothing that, I mean, and hell, minimum wage at McDonald's is 725, 735. It's not enough to live on. It really ain't. It's a town that you'd like to stop and see. I mean, it's beautiful here. I mean, some spots I could take you and it just take your breath away. I mean, it's a beautiful spot, but I mean, it's one of those towns to where really you just, unless you ain't got a good name, you ain't got money, then it's really not worth staying that long. I mean, it really ain't. But I mean, with me being on the street and being the way, and the way I'm living now, it's kind of, it's home, really. But I mean, I want to get out. Being from Sioux, I'm living here my entire life. I just, I need to get out. I think that would be best for me. But I mean, I know I'll come back, but I don't want to come back to stay. I want to, I want to get out. I used to have friends that were good friends when I was younger. You know, I knew them very well. We were buddy, we're buddies most of our lives, and just one day, you know, it completely changed. The addiction got to them and nowadays I don't even see them or even know where they are anymore. We all make bad choices but sometimes those bad choices lead to bad places and it hurts me seeing many people my age out there in the streets drinking and having trouble with addiction. At the end of the day you know there's not much I can do about it because you know I was brought up to respect people, let them live their lives and if they want help, then I'll do the best to do the best that to my ability to help them as best I can. This is a low income town. There is no the poverty is there. You can see it. And Stillwell is really known as a drug town. There's no hiding that. That's been a known fact for a while. Employment rate is not that great. You know, it took me quite a few years to even get a job anywhere in this town and I was lucky to get where I'm at now. I've worked with people who have beat it you know they're living their lives they're living better lives and I'm happy for them but you know there's those some people out there who still struggle with it you know they'll try their best to stop it but just something that just goes wrong in, the, in their life it just sets them off and they just go back right back into it. Even in my own family, yeah, I've had few family members who have lost their way, and we don't hardly see them anymore. That's the that's part. Of, that's mostly the reason why I think the life expectancy is so low. Because you know, just people get caught up in the wrong crowd, and they end up just like how they were. I mean, yeah, we can get our jobs, we can do everything like that, but it's our existence as a people is what's dying. Native people are still the only minority that has to prove their legitimacy. Up until like maybe the early, probably the late 50s, you could buy a Native American child for like $50. Not an adoption or anything like that, just straight up they just come in and take them. We had to instill a lot of laws within our own nation to protect our own people with the Indian Child Act. There's constant cases of missing women and they just get passed over. We're constantly fighting for our existence here. A friend of mine I used to work with, um, he, uh, he was in prison for a short amount of time. And in that time, uh, he ran into some elders who were talking Cherokee. And uh, they said they were mad at him because he didn't know any Cherokee. And his, his uh, response back was uh, because you know, those elders were in jail, and they weren't teaching the younger generations our language. I wish I, when I was little, I used to, I really do wish I listened a lot more. Because my granny Bird, before she passed away, she tried to tell, teach me how to speak Cherokee. Because I'm, that's what I am, I'm three quarters Cherokee. I mean, my, out of my family, my, all my full blood Native American family has passed on. They've all, they're all gone. Be damned if my kids ain't gonna be raised and taught what I know about my heritage because that's what's keeping me alive now. Me being on the street and whatnot, it, that's what's made me survive as long as I am. Like my grandpa, he speaks Cherokee very well. He's on my dad's side. 
he speaks it very well and his English is very broken because you know he spoke Cherokee you know majority of his whole life and his English isn't that well but I mean, he'll, whenever he would talk to me he would kind of take his time trying to speak and a lot of the older ones are like that like all my aunts on my mom's side they all speak it very well I told him I want them to speak it whenever my son's around. If they have him with them or whatever, I want him to, under, to learn it and understand it because we don't have a lot of the language that we used to. There's Cherokee and then there's Creek Cherokee. Most people don't realize that, okay, it's Cherokee, yeah, but that's two different tribes. It's two different ways of talking. That's two different languages. That's two different ways of living. That's why, I mean, most of them down Bell, or down bell, down greasy, or anywhere, anywhere like that. They're old timer. It's old school. They talk different. <laughs> it's kind of crazy because uh, in one community, it'll sound good to you because that's the way. Because that's how you were brought up hearing it. But you go to just maybe a mile or so down the road, and you'll hear other people speaking it completely different. It'll be the same language, but it'll, you, it's just a different accent with the dialects. Because we came from North Carolina, if you went there, their way of speaking is slightly different than ours. Ours is almost like a slang kind of style of Cherokee, I guess you would say. We don't fully pronounce a lot of the words. We kind of cut them down a little. It's the same language, it's the same words, but put in a different perspective or a different way of saying them. Just like OCO. OCO means hello. Everybody, when I'm driving, when somebody asks me if it's clear on my side of the road, I say, well, that's good, it's, it's clear. When I get done here, I want to be able to go to Walmart in Steelwell and not hide from you. That, uh, that's my goal. Now there's ways to set myself and my whole family up for life. Unfortunately, there's a way to do that. Set me and my family up for life. I don't want any part of that. My goal is not that. Thank you. But the good Lord did, man. I got hammered on Facebook. I've said this before, but I believe it. He put in my simple brain what this job is. It's nothing. Comp I had some intellectual I'll say, well, if you just do this, you, you might understand better. You might you might see the picture. When you, I, I told him, you know what? If I act like you, I don't want to understand. And that's what I told him. We saw some of those homes where people still were having to live while some others live in big homes. And uh, it's, that's just not right. It, it would be different if we didn't have enough money. But we have enough money. $2 billion budget. And it's just not just a Cherokee Nation. All health care systems are a drain on tribal budgets. What we need to do is work with the, the Ketua. We need to work with the Eastern Van Cherokee. Develop our own model system. My mom was a full blood who was taken from her home. Excuse me if I get emotional here. She was taken from her home when she was four years old and put in an orphan's asylum, which is now Sequoia. And they did that, that was designed to strip her of her culture and traditions that she grew up with. Mom was only four years old. Can you imagine being taken away from your mother at four years of age? I see different types of crowds, different type buildings. But if you're Cherokee, will you just... Give yourself a round. I like this Cherokee. If you're Cherokee, let these people know that Cherokee is came out tonight. Cherokee is came out tonight. Those no doctor today signs, if I hung one of them, them on, on my classroom, no teacher today, that's unacceptable. Why is that acceptable? It shouldn't be. We're going to double quadruple the size of our Cherokee mentorship program. We're going to get qualified people at our immersion school, and we're going to put the immersion school into our rural communities so that our Cherokee language will survive. We can have a world-class health center. you, you got to see where all the money's going. It's going up to Venita. 
you guys, your facility here is nowhere compared to what it is up in Benita. And uh, it is crucial that you guys deserve the best. You guys are the heart and the center of the Cherokee Nation. Our ancestors settled right here. We, we just gave $8.2 million to the state of Arkansas for a gaming compact. We got nothing out of it. We gave $4 million to Northeastern State University. And we got nothing out of that deal. We gave a half million to the Smithsonian. We are continually giving millions of dollars away to outside entities. But yet, we drive around in, in Jay and Adair County, and we do. We see our homes are dilapidated, and Cherokees are getting turned down one after another because there's no money. I get phone calls constantly that contract help is being denied. There's employees here in the Cherokee Nation that are here tonight. And a lot of them are, are hiding from cameras. They're afraid to be here because of the culture that this administration has created. People walk around in fear that are employees of the Cherokee Nation. They're afraid to say anything, they're on pins and needles, and it's like it's uh it's like we're living in com communism, it's like we're living in Russia. And people are afraid to, to say or do anything because they're afraid of retaliation and the punitive damages that come because you support another another candidate. And that's that's intentional. The purpose of that is, is to control you guys and to suppress you as a Cherokee people so that these non-Cherokees can continue to get rich off the Cherokee Nation and continue to retain power and outsource your money to non-Cherokees. The chief we have today is a generic. This is the real chief of the Cherokee yeah. Nation. Hey, please, uh, we're going to bless, bless this meeting real quick and closure. Uh, Mr. Hothouse, where are you at? There he is right here. If you guys would please stand and remove your, your headwear if you're able to. Uh, Blue Hothouse, we've had many conversations at uh, Del Rancho, and I always enjoy listening to our elders, but... Oh, don't shoot. Oh, do you? Come on. Yeah. I can tell you a lot of things. What's been going on. I'm for David and also Sean. I've known them a long time. I ain't afraid of the chief. Well, I told him before when they have a meeting over, I said, hey, why? Just because you walked in, everybody started talking your name. You did just like a man. You did just like a You didn't want to hear. We're Cherokee. So then we see. That's why, Jiggy, you know, who said, we got 2,000 speaking Cherokee here in Oklahoma. And there in Cherokee, North Carolina, they know me, the chief knows me. We got 1,700 Cherokees down there, less than 200 speaks Cherokee. We're losing it, John Tisco, huh? I said, clean it, they got close. The same right here. He did a like if they own that, if they want it, it's going. Us Cherokee folks are standing around Walmart. I tell some of them, I said, say, oh, is they own that? <laughs> huh? Hello, you white folks. I said, that is not. So like, if they want it, if they just like it, son, you done that, what? The New York, no, I'm telling you, it's good to get assisted. If they don't hear us talking Cherokee, how are they going to learn? Now, I don't know how many, I'm seven, I'll am i be 78 years old in just a few months. When I went to school, I was about eight years old. And when I walked on that school ground, mark that. I better not say it. No Cherokee word when I got on that school ground. Every turkey word I got, I got five pedals. 
Sometime I walked away a few hundred pounds a day. I said, why? They want to take this Cherokee out. I said, you'll never take Cherokee out of me. Because I love you. We're going to pray. Okay, those are going to learn the hand. Is Kito Tina the God so the dark God? The God is Kist and his guest. He does put David, Sean, Meredith, the Histella, he not this is a love stone, so the Eula love stone there. The God on Ojila, Ojali Heliga, and he chews and done and that, the Histella, his guest. You do guess him. Amen. Cherokee Nation has their major uh, electronics here, CNI, Cherokee Nation Industries, which does uh, electronics for NASA. You know, highly educated, highly punctual, highly necessary work. And they hire, they do an Indian preference because they're a sovereign nation. They do a lot of parts and things for the rockets and all of that, uh, control boards, wiring harnesses, uh, things like that. They're a subcontractor for the military. They do almost a lot exclusively military contract electronics. CNI, which is uh, the factory around here in Stillwell, it's actually the old Walmart. Um, they made it into CNI, and from what I've heard, their base is making wiring for helicopters and other aircrafts that go into the military. I really would like for Facet to be a bigger company because they were smaller. It was about seven or eight years ago before they, they built on. Where I work, um, we make, we make, uh, fuel filters, fuel, uh, jet fuel filters, as a matter of fact. Uh, we do government contracts as well. We do big uh, quantities of filters that go in, that go across seas to the military as we, that are actually across seas now. Everybody calls it FACET. That's what it's, for years, it's been FACET. And then they got bought out. And it's a different company, different people knowing it. They want a different name. But everybody that has worked there, they know it for facet, Pico facet. And that's where I used to work. I used to work there. What they do there is basically just build, build the filters, the air filters, the water filters. I didn't really know what those factories were for the longest time until just a couple of years ago, find out what they built. But it seems like a lot of factories like that still get all their stuff outsourced almost. You know, we build all the components, but then it goes off somewhere else to, you know, finish up, I guess you would say. Yeah, for Stillwell to have a lot, low life expectancy, but we do do things uh, for our country, even though not many people know it. Yeah, you, you would think that, you know, with the product being built here, that there would still be a heavier look at taking care of the town or where it comes from but then again look at Detroit it was one of the biggest manufacturers of motor of motor vehicles and it's it's gone down a lot too. My name's Katrina Beals and I own JC Bugs Resale a little, uh, little mom and pop store down the road across from the smoke shop I've been here in business for about three years but my business is 13 years old. I moved from Arkansas over here. I like to say, if you really want to survive in life and you ain't got no money, and you feel like you're down and out, Steelwell's a good place to come to. Because you can go and get help. 
you know, they'll give you a place to stay. They'll also help you get to the temporary service to get a job. They will even help you get an ID card. You know, all you got to do is have to want. That's it. But if you come down here thinking that you're gonna get over and get in, and you want something for cheap and something under the cover, this is a good place to go to jail too. <laughs> you know, even though you got public assistance, this is a good place to go to jail. But anybody that wants to start their life all over new, come down here, it's the cheapest place to live. You know, and everybody around here will give you food, place to stay, and clothes. You can go to any of these little shelter areas around here, get clothes, shoes, anything that your kids and stuff need. It's really okay. I don't believe Stillwell is any different than any other town. Every town has its, you know, its ups and downs. And, you know, we do have some high crime rates here, but we also have a good uh, local police department that's awesome, that helps, helps a lot of people, you know, and if you can't, like us, we give back to the community. He owns the tire shop and I own a resale shop down the street and we help lots of people. You know, we, people come in and ask and say, you know, I don't have money for a tire. We help. I have people that come to my shop that don't have clothes or, you know, their house is burnt down or I see somebody walking or I see a child come in and their shoes are, their shoes are all tore up. I'll go back and I will pick shoes out, put shoes on this child and you know, it's not, we have a lot of, we have a lot of homeless people here, but everybody tries to embrace the homeless people and help as much as they can. My name is Colleen Stevenson. I have lived here in Stillwell my entire life and I've owned my business as a flower shop and a bistro and we do catering. Um, a little bit of everything. In the small town you have to do a little bit of everything to survive. Just one thing just doesn't quite cut it. So I've been here all my life. Uh, I've been in business 41 years. Raised three children. Um, the business in Stillwell is not as good as bigger towns and it's pretty much feast or famine. In flower shops especially it always has been. But I love my town. I love my people and um, anyways and I'm just really, really happy to be in business here. I think we have a lot of drug use in here in Stillwell. Uh, that's mainly what I think they're talking about, but it's not any more so than anywhere else. It's a national thing, and we're a small town, and how they got their figures on that, I don't know, but I do know, being in the flower business, I see death more than anybody else, except the funeral home people. And uh, it's not a fun thing to watch people pass away in their you know, 30s and 40s and 50s. But still, yet, it's, um, it's a real thing. But it's not just us. It's, it's nationwide. It's not that people aren't willing to work. Jobs are hard to find. And if you got one, you need to hang on to it. And if you need something from the tire shop, we always give away free tires for people that really need help that gets here. And it's no cost to you. It's just what we do. Thank you. Awesome. We have a new plant in town. It's called Red, Red Bird. It is a new uh, dispensary for medical, mar medical marijuana. And it's out on 51 East, going towards Arkansas. It's going to bring a lot of jobs to the. It's going to bring a lot of jobs to the community. I have been to Colorado, Colorado Springs. And I'm going to tell you, when I drove, I just kind of looked, and you would not believe all the people flocking to that area to put their money in. I know everybody has their own opinion on marijuana, but I do believe that it's helped up there. A lot of their money is put into the schools and the roads. They have the best schools and the best roads. So... I'm thinking down here, if we go with that aspect of it, I think we're going to do some awesome, awesome things in this town with, with the revenue that comes from it. I've been here, if I came down here and got a business, you know, I've had a business everywhere. I had one in Springdale and Fayetteville. And when I got here, it was real simple. Keep my nose clean, treat people right, and that's all it took. Yeah. And people like to swap down here. Yeah. <laughs> I love swaps. Death is not exactly a bad thing. It's not a good thing, it's but not. it's all just one thing. It's just it's is all, what it is. Yeah. 
It's so like every second that we have is only a momentary second, so we shouldn't be able to that's hold on to it. You just need to enjoy it for each thing. That's where the Taoism comes in, because they don't really feel fear towards death. They said being afraid of death is like being afraid of being born. And that means you shouldn't be even alive if you're afraid to die. I mean, what the point is your life is you're afraid to go. I was like, I'm not afraid to die, but I am afraid for those who are there after I die. I got a daughter on the way. That would terrify me if I die and she's a baby. I would just want her to be able to live with herself, and that's the one thing I hope, because I don't want my kid to be not being able to live with herself. I want, that's all I'll be like, can you live with yourself? And that's all I'll be like, that's how I am with myself. When I make a fucked up choice, and I've still got moments in my life, I still make fucked up choices, and they're not horrible, but they're still not the right choice. And I think to myself, can you live with yourself afterwards? This story kind of goes back uh, to uh, when I lost my brother. Um, he died in a head-on collision, and he was only 20 years old. Uh, I've already surpassed that age. Um, my brother was actually on his way to give his two weeks notice at his job because he had found a better one. And on his way home is when he ran into a head-on collision, and uh, it killed him instantly. But um, it was a hard time for me and my family. The, all I have is my, my memories of my dad. I mean, my dad was my biggest <laughs> the biggest person in my life. I mean, when he passed away, I, I hit rock bottom. I didn't know what to do, but I mean... And it says, uh, we'll see who catches the biggest bass. Love your daddy. My dad passed away two years ago. <clears throat> couple going, yeah, going on two years now. In a car accident. And that's just from two of his letters. I mean, he... Yeah, I, I don't really don't want to say it out, but I mean... He got some thought and he'd write me and that's just too, that's his handwriting from his letters. So I mean, that's why it's so special to me. And like I said, the only story I could tell you was about my dad going fishing. <laughs> that's why the fish hooks on there. That's all me and my dad ever did. If we weren't fishing, we were hunting. And if we weren't hunting, we were sleeping. <laughs> when we were up doing something, it was always outdoors. It's a lot of that dying out now and it just sucks. But I love Stillwell, always will. But, I mean, I, I really wish it would change. When you get that valley, pull up a rose or two. Just say, oh, the roses in the valley, they smell so good. Cause why? Christ is there. Christ is I'll go ahead because I'll keep the Holy Ghost will keep talking in my energy. The old flesh is weak, but the spirit is with it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if our God can speak the word and put mountains up here, He can remove that mountain. Amen. But we don't even think when we're going through a trial, right? Amen. She had a child four years ago, and they gave her up to die. She would never be able to walk. Never be able to talk. And, and Sequoia said, No, oh, we're going to take her. We're going to raise her. Even though she ain't going to have no life, she won't be able to walk, talk, do anything. I sent her. Uh, other day, uh, frozen yogurt. She said to her mama, she said, Kelly, I love you. But one that couldn't talk, and she brought it over to the house, said, Blue, the 
this baby will never even talk or walk. Her heart is so messed up. She got to do this, she got to do that. I said, say, boy, now one to you only. I don't know if you know my God, but God knows this little baby. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. We're going to ask God to heal this little child. That child couldn't walk. She's mean and, and <laughs> she runs, she jumps, she screams. Huh? And let's be praying for her because I think this week or so I got to go back and check out and they'll find nothing for her. Anything impossible with God. Nothing impossible with God. Nothing impossible. Praise God. All of these face persecution. All of them. That's right. And all of all all of them had to trust God. All of them had to be obedient to God, and they didn't have to fight at all. God won the battle for them. And he'll do it for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh? Yeah. If we'll be faithful and have faith, he's going to do our fighting for us. Mm -hmm. Let's pound that in mm -hmm. our heart. Mm -hmm. Don't let the devil steal it. Right? Yeah. You'll have a picture. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when the trial comes, just tell him, go ahead and put it on me, because I'm going to be it. Overcomer. Overcomer. I'm going to be a survivor. Uh -huh. That's right. We can survive through what? Faith. You can't survive through McDonald's. <laughs> or Walmart. Because you know it's a hungry time. <laughs> I don't know if anybody brought in the thing. But you all pastors getting down a hundred and ninety four pounds from two hundred and twenty three pounds. I weigh 194. Are you sad? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm feeling good. I'm going to be able to jump over that altar. There's a lot of good in this town. You know, there's, I've met people, I've met people who are strangers. You know, they just, we just had a clear conversation. You know, we just laugh, have a good time. You know, that's the, that's some things that people don't look at and when they think that this town is the deadliest city they look they think that it's a bad town that it's bad and stuff like that because the life expectancy is so low but you know when you get to know people that are in this town you know they can turn out to be really good people people you want to be around and have fun with you know people you want to go to when you're having trouble and you know you want you just want to sit around and have a good time and have some good laughs and make good memories that's what that's what life is about, is to be here for a good time. And, you know, just make it the best that you can. Not not look at all the bad and just keep it bad, but, you know, just have a good time with who you can. See, around here, everybody knows everybody. Me, I'm from church. I can take you on that whole mountain. From where my house burned down, we got a house, or we got a, well, we got a hill or a mountain or wherever you want to call it. But. We have a mountain all behind our house that we used to live in. I can take you in that, on that entire mountain and tell you where I can come right back to the same spot. Yeah, and the long yeah, hill, I can take you to a spot that we can walk up an entire hill and there's uh, pine trees all around. And I can take you to a spot to where me and my dad used to go down there and we used to pray. But we used to 
we used to sit there and we used to smoke. And the way we sit, well, the way I smoke is that we smoke on each other, as in we get uh, sage and we get an eagle feather and we pray on each other, we pray on our problems and play on what's going on around our life right now. So I mean, I would love. I mean, I'd love to show you. I mean, I, when it comes to my history. <laughs> I might not know much of it, but what I know, I would love to teach people. We love going out and seeing deer in our front yard. Um, and and we just love the people here. Uh, my daughter had a, had a bad accident several years ago. And I will tell you about these people that they take care of other people. And they know how to take care of other people. Um, and without getting emotional about that, uh, because she had a really bad accident and people that didn't have much of anything came to my house to try to help me and i hope that that's what comes uh, comes across these are just good hard-working people um that love one another and love the lord and and like to live in the country we try to help anybody that is in need of help just like when he got his thumb cut off we have people that come in that says hey do you need to borrow money hey can I come work for you just to help you out where you don't have to be closed, you know? It's, we're a tight-knit little community. We're a little over 4,000 people now. I expect us to grow quite a bit more than that in the next 10 years. Uh, I am foreseeing somewhat of a boom for Stillwell. A group of us at Walmart, we all worked together and then we would we would get together and I like, host these, you know, free shows here in town. We first got the concept was with my friend Colt White Taylor and my other friend Matt Hendricks. They started working on putting a show together where um, you know, we just wanted to have a free concert, get people to come in and just you know, we tried to bring something positive to the town. We had people come in and play from like Fayetteville and, and like Tulsa. We also did a few fundraisers, helped out some people. Like I remember a girl reaching out to them about helping with their family. I can't remember what the reason was, but we got together and helped raise money for them, just asking for donations. It started out as an excuse for us just to hang out and play music together, but then we tried to, we wanted to do something more positive with it. And you know everybody's kind of moved on, done their own thing, and I mean I, I miss them because those were some of the best summers ever because it was just all of us getting together and having fun playing music. My brother, he's a producer, and he's his stuff is starting to take off too on SoundCloud. This is the end of the, like the Trail of Cheers. Yeah. It's like what they did to Nate Christie, bro. They burned him out of his house, dude. Shot him, took him to Arkansas, took pictures with him. Okay, I mean, they don't take care of that place, dude. Like, they're supposed to come and clean the water here. I didn't get your fucking grandma kicked out. Shut the fuck I'm not gonna get my grandma kicked out, bro. I mean, if you're gonna kick my grandma out, oh, I'll just find her somewhere else to live, you know? I don't know. Uh, really? I'll buy I mean, uh, I'll sell my car. I mean, this is my grandma. My grandma took care of me, you know? I'll take care of my, my grandma, you know? What's this about? That's, that's what people forget, dude. They don't even care about the family, you know? Okay. Family, man. Family you know is. I mean? Family is everything, dude. If I want the kids in this town to be affected in a good way and make the change, then you gotta be the change. Be the change you want to see in the world, right?
aggressively outspoken, but feeling more broken. I'm feeling like I'm soaking in the rain as I'm trying to strain to get myself to contain these words within my brain. <sighs> broken like the chain on my bike when I was a little kid trying to get to school on time because I'm getting tired of hearing about my mom and dad commit stupid crime over the middle of the night and I hear another fight. Felt like the frostbite was taking over my very soul. Paid the toll over the dull hours I was spending, thinking about how I could end up having Mystic Powers if I fantasize enough. Realize my life is getting kind of tough, so I need to get a little bit rough back. Been able to bluff with the best of them, sure as hell, gotta get that S off my chest because I am bulletproof. But then again, I might be able to win even if the chances are grim. I'm more like slim picking when I'm doing this shit. They're picking me limb from limb like seeds and stems off the weed. Feeling like I'm going full speed. But at the same time, I'm stuck in turtle on a lawnmower trying to get these motherfuckers off my ass. But fuck it. I'm not high class, lower middle, getting kind of brittle as the ages go by. But even when I can't even twiddle my thumbs, trust me, I'm going to get you before I die. Alright, there you go.